Family Theater presents Loretta Young and Stephen McNally. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Man Who Bought the Phone Company, starring Stephen McNally. And now, here is your hostess, Loretta Young. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges us to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Man Who Bought the Phone Company, starring Stephen McNally as Mr. Cannon. Yes? Uh, Mr. Cannon, please. I'm sorry he's not in yet. Who's well, Forbes over in the rolling mill? When do you expect him? Any minute now, Mr. Forbes, but he left word that he wasn't to be disturbed any time before 10.30. No calls, no messages, not a thing. I'll tell him you call, though. I've got to see him. That's I'm no sorry, Mr. Forbes, but he said he wouldn't see, listen, or talk to anyone before 10.30. I'll put you down for 10.31. Yes? Miss Littlefield? Yes? Mr. Cannon's chauffeur just dropped him off in the lobby. Oh, uh, thank you, Miss Bates. Yes? Mr. Carter, Mr. Cannon's chauffeur just dropped him off in the lobby. He's probably on his way up in the elevator right now. I'll be right over. Yes? Mr. Tunsil, Mr. Cannon's on his way up. You'd better hurry. Yes? Mr. Riverfond, jail's on his way. I've already called Carter and Tunsil. Remember the meetings at nine sharp. Uh, what time is Clandon getting here? Nine sharp with the rest of you if he knows what's good for him. I had one of the girls retype that brief with the changes you dictated. Good girl. Be right along. Good morning, Mr. Carter. Good morning, Miss Littlefield. <laughs> I suppose you at least know what J.L.'s got cooked up for us this bright a.m. It's got something to do with a stock transfer. That's the best I've been able to get. Excuse me. Oh, good morning. Good morning. What that is? Well, what's the great man planning for today? Why, ask me. I'm just the first vice president. <laughs> Aren't we all? Well, whatever it is, it better be good. You mean on account of the Lanson deal? Yes. And after I bought up the whole site for less than $12 an acre. Say, I wonder how a golf course would do there. Did I tell you I spoke to River Font yesterday at the club? No. He thinks it was something to do with utilities. Big, too. You'd think J.L. would let down a little bit, wouldn't you? Well, he didn't get this far by letting down. You know, in a way, J.L. is sort of a miracle. He's something they said couldn't happen anymore, a tycoon up from the shops. And not 40 at that. Well, I'd hardly call our advertising department the shops. No, but how often do one of those copy devils make the big league? Without backing, I mean. Well, oh, hello, Henry. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, what's up, anyhow? Uh, J.L. spoken to either of you about this? Nothing. Is he buying or selling? He's already bought, or I should say foreclosed. On what? Well, I don't really know. It's big, a lot of property and stock involved. You know that, but uh, you don't know what it is. No. You see, what he's actually done is to buy up a lot of notes outstanding. Three or four banking chains involved. Well, it couldn't have been too big if he did it out of surplus. Yeah, but he didn't. He refinanced the whole operation, and it's going to cost us, too. Oh, my dear. That means a complete new set of charts. And just as I was beginning to understand the old ones... But we are still in the steel business, are we not? Oh, I'm sure of that. Unless, of course, this new thing is more of the same. In which case, we now are the steel business. Uh, be just like J.L. to buy something like uh, GM or Chrysler. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm very sorry to be late. You've been waiting long? No, no, no. Has everyone had coffee? Have uh, you, Mr. Tunsil? Uh, bright and early, J.L. Yes, me yeah. too, J.L. Uh, I couldn't seven. sleep very well last night. 
I wonder if I'm doing the right thing. Well, to tell the truth, J.L., we've been a bit curious about that ourselves. Just what is it we're buying? Oh, I'm sorry, gentlemen. In the rush of settling all the details, I neglected to... Yes? Mr. Clandon is here with the contract, sir. Very well, Miss Littlefield. Send him right in. Clandon? Isn't he corporation counsel for Universal Bell? That's correct. Ah, good morning, Mr. Clandon. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, Mr. Clandon, Mr. Tinsel. I'll do, Mr. Carter. I'll do. Yeah, and our corporation counsel, Mr. Riverfont. Uh, Mr. Riverfont? Well, uh, I've brought everything for your signature. Oh, very well. Might as well get on with it then, eh? Uh, Would you sign first, Thaddeus? Uh, very well. Oh, very right well, yeah. on that line. Mm -hmm. Fine, uh, fine. Now you, Jim. Uh, just below. Very good, very good. And now you, Henry. Uh, say, J. Just below Mr. Riverfont's signature, thank you. Well, all right. Fine, fine. And now you, Mr. Cannon. Yes. And now me. That makes it official. At last. I've finally done it. It took 50. Years. Yes, it's all yours now, Mr. Cannon. All mine. J.L., is something wrong? Wrong? <laughs> uh, J.L., pardon me, what have we bought? <laughs> oh, that's right, you don't know. Well, now I'll tell you. We've bought the phone company. Uh, uh, the phone company? All of it? Lock, stock, and barrel. Fifteen years. Fifteen. Fifteen years I've waited. But, J.L., the phone company, what do you want with that? It's a good investment. A fine one, eh, Clandon? Oh, yes, yes, fine, fine. Uh, cheap at twice the price. And that's not all. Not by a long shot. There's something else about the phone company. Something else. Uh, J.L., uh, are you quite sure you, you don't feel ill? Ill? <laughs> ill? I've never felt better in my life. Clandon. Uh, yes, sir. You're working for me now. I hope to be, sir. You are. I'm looking for an employee of yours. Wait, I have the address right here. Yes, a Miss Birdie Johnson. She's a supervisor with you. I mean, I mean with me. Uh, a friend of yours, Mr. Cannon? A friend? <laughs> oh, well, uh, do, you, do you happen to know where she works? I just told you, the phone company. With my phone company. Oh, yes, sir. Find her. Yes, sir. Right away, now. Uh, yes, sir. I'll get on it immediately. And let me know the minute you have, no matter what hour of the day or night. Uh, the very minute, sir. Oh. Goodbye, sir. Good man, that Clandon. I think he's going to get on. Uh, J.L., uh, would you mind telling us what in heaven's name you're doing? The phone company? What do we want with that? It'll take us a million years to pay for Nothing it. Nothing of a kind. It's, it's, it's like buying the world. Thaddeus, am I to understand that you disagree with the manner in which I'm discharging my duties? Why, no, no, J.L., it's, it's just that I, well, I was curious to, as to what you had uh, uh, done. I've bought the phone company, that's what I've done. Any other questions? Uh, no, no, that seems to cover things. Well, very well, then. This meeting of the board of directors is hereby adjourned. Now, let's start priming the pump, shall we? Go out and make a few phone calls. Yes? Mr. Cannon, I know you left orders not to be disturbed this evening. Perfectly all right, Miss Littlefield. What is it? There's a Mr. Clandon to see you. He says it's urgent. Clandon? Uh, last month, when we acquired the phone company, he was the one... Yes, who... I know, I know, Mr. Clandon. Send him right in. Uh, right away, sir. Clandon, eh? Well, now we'll see about Miss Birdie Johnson. Well, where have you been? It's almost five weeks. Oh, I realize that, sir. <laughs> Perhaps when I explain... It... Yes, go ahead, explain, and it better be good. Well, uh, I, I first consulted the company's employment record, sir, but no luck. You, you mean that Miss Birdie Johnson's no longer an employee of... Of mine? That was my first impression, sir, but then it occurred to me that perhaps, whether she was an employee or not, you still would want to locate her. She's got to be an employee. Nothing else matters. Oh, but she is. She is. She sir. is. She is really? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, but you see, she has since married. Married? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, sir. She is now uh, Mrs. Birdie Becker. Married. That means she has a husband who can support her. Oh, I'm afraid not, sir. You see... She's a widow. Her husband died four years ago. Died, eh? Yes, 
sir. Well, but I... Oh, I suppose he left some money. Oh, I rather doubt it, sir. She lives very humbly. She's rather an old woman, as you know. I've never met her. How old is she? You've... You've never met her. I'll ask the questions. How old is she? Well, I... I, I should say... 65. 65? Well, good, good. So, just a minute. 65 and still an employee? Uh, well, that's what I was going to tell you, sir. She's... She's retiring this year. Furthermore, she is one of our... Uh, uh, your oldest and most honored employees. Oh, she is. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. As a matter of fact, the company is planning to give her a testimonial dinner next Wednesday to celebrate her 45 years of loyal service. Well. Never absent, never late in all that time. I can believe it. You have her address... Uh, yes, yes, right here, sir. Uh, it's, uh, oh dear, now what, uh, where is, the, oh yes, yes, here we are, 6317 West Euclid Street. 6317 West Euclid Street. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That'll be all, Clandon. Uh, uh, sir, I take it you are going to pay a call on Mrs. Becker? You take it correctly? Then if I might make a suggestion. Yes? Uh, well, I believe that the dear old lady has no inkling of the preparations that have been made to uh, honor her next week. Is that right? Uh, yes, sir. A plaque is to be presented at the dinner, uh, also a lump sum of considerable cash, uh, plus her first monthly pension check. Very interesting. You, uh, you won't say anything to her that would prematurely disclose the nature of this presentation, will you, sir? Trust me, Clandon. Not a word. <laughs> Yes? Mrs. Uh, Birdie Becker? Uh, th that's right. Nay, Miss Birdie Johnson? Yes. Uh, do I know you, sir? My name is Cannon, James Cannon. I'm the new president of the phone company. The new president? Why, I, I'm overcome. Oh, please do step in, Mr. Cannon. Thank you. Uh, uh, please sit down. Thank you. I can't tell you what an honor this is, Mr. Cannon. The pleasure is all mine, Mrs. You, Becker. You seem quite young to be such a successful executive, Mr. Cannon. Uh, do you have a family? Oh, no, I, I'm all alone in the world. Uh, just like you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. Before I state the exact purpose of this call, Mrs. Becker, I'd like to confirm some information about you. Oh, by all means. You've been with the company for how long? Almost 45 years. Never late, never absent. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, tell me where you were stationed, uh, that is, in what branch, during the month of August 1939? Now, let me see. 1939. Yes. I was working upstate in the Watertown office as, yes, as night supervisor. Uh, I thought so. I, I beg pardon? Uh, that information coincides with my own. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. No, let us stretch your memory. Yes? Do you remember anything remarkable that happened to you on Thursday night during the second week of August, 1939? Uh, let me see. Oh, that goes back quite a way. Fifteen years. Well, Monday was my night off, so I would have been working on a Thursday. Undoubtedly. Then if it did happen, uh, this something remarkable, it was while I was on duty. <laughs> Think hard. Did, uh... Anything bothersome or, uh, or, well, unusual come up in the office that night? Not that I recall. A dissatisfied customer, perhaps. Someone who complained about the service. I, I don't, uh... Oh, now let me think, Mr. Cannon. It, it does seem there was something. Yes? There was one call. I think it was that night. <laughs> it was a young man, as I remember. <laughs> yes, it was a young man. <laughs> what uh, oh, seemed he, to be the trouble? He was furious. Uh, uh, in a way, I, I felt sorry for him, but I could do nothing about it. About what? Well, you see, this young man was calling from a payphone, one of those public booths they have next to gas stations and whatnot. And yes. And he wanted to make a toll call to Brand City, uh, nearly a hundred miles away. Brand City, yes. Yes, but you see, he didn't have the correct change. In fact, all he had was a ten-dollar bill. And it was nearly two in the morning. 
I offered to put the call through for him collect, but he didn't want me to do that. Did he give any reason for not wanting you to? Uh, yes. Now, as I recall, he was calling a prospective employer. I, I think it was the, the night editor of some newspaper I in Brand City, and he thought a collect call would look, well... Rather bad. So what happened? Well, I, I couldn't put the call through for him. It's against the rules. Against the rules? Yes. Huh? Tell me, was it uh, an important call? He said so. He said it was about a job and that he had to speak to the man that night. He was out on the edge of town somewhere. I, I guess he never got the job, poor fellow. You know, I've often wondered what became of him. Shall I tell you, Mrs. Becker? Do, do you know him? I am him. No. Yes. Oh, I can't believe Here's it. Here's something else you may have trouble believing. You're fired. Fired? From the phone company? From the phone company, forever and ever. Oh, you can't, please. Fired, believe me. Sacked. Out. Unemployed. Mr. Cannon, I've been a loyal employee for 45 well, years. Well, you're not one anymore. You're canned permanently. But my pension... Forget it. No pension, no severance pay, nothing. Mr. Cannon, have a little pity. Did you have any pity on me that night? Oh. When my whole career hung on a phone call? Did you? I offered to put your call through, collect. Didn't I? All right, Mrs. Becker. I'm not an unfair man. Anytime you want to make a collect oh. call anywhere in the world, <laughs> just get in touch with my phone company. Oh. We'll be glad to handle it for you. Good night. <laughs> All right, all right, quiet down, quiet down. I fire the woman and that's that. But, J.L., the newspapers are making mincemeat of us. Yeah, and the stockholders. And the union people. And the non-union people. They say it's the worst blunder management has made in the last 50 years. Now, let me tell you something, all of you. I did what I did. I even the score with that old, old reprobate. And all right, perhaps the company won't win any popularity contests about it. But ask yourselves one question, one vital question. Has it hurt business? Well, no, of course not. But the public... Publicity, who cares? Let the public howl. I've got them over a barrel. You can't get away with it, Jay. Oh, yes, I can. That's what's so perfect about it. The perfect revenge. I fired her. I cut her off without a cent. And there's nothing. Absolutely nothing anyone can do about it. Uh, J.L., uh, listen to reason, will you? Now, you've had your revenge. The old lady's testimonial dinner is just three days off. I've had two public relations councils working on an idea all afternoon. What idea? Well, we'll say the whole thing was a joke, uh, just a gag, see? A gag? Uh, listen, now, now, it's a natural. We'll say that you're losing that job because of Mrs. Becker's devotion to the company rules was actually the turning point of your life. At first, you were angry, naturally. But then as you began to climb the ladder of success, you realized that you owed all of it to her. That's a lot of hogwash. Well, in, in a way, it's true, It is J. not. One of it is. She's fired, and that's that. J.L., reconsider. She's such an old lady. And she's never been later absent. I'll bet she wishes she'd been absent that night 15 years ago when I cried a call at Brand City. J.L., now please think it over. We can turn this into a publicity bonanza if you'll go along with it. It's the great American success story. The young fellow who, who got up off the mat and came back to be president of the very company that lost him his first job. It's, it's great, uh, J.L. An inspiration. It sticks. She's fired, she stays fired. That's final. <laughs> Would you like to go in now, Mr. Tunsil? Are the others in there yet? No, they're on their way over. I'll wait for them. Isn't it horrible? A disaster, and so quick, like a tidal wave, all in less than three days. There he is. Henry, and George. You've been in to see uh, J.L. yet? I was waiting for you boys. Frankly, I didn't want to face him alone. Uh, how is he taking it, Miss Littlefield? He's like a man in shock. I've never seen him like this. Helpless. He just sits there, staring at the phone. Well, I suppose we might as well get it over with. You know, I... I can't believe it. Uh, this teaches one great lesson, gentlemen. A costly lesson, but a great one. What's that? 
that the customer is the most powerful person in the world. You're uh, right, River Fox. You're right. right. Yeah. Let's get it over with. <clears throat> J.L. J.L.? Hmm? Uh, J.L., it's us, your board of directors. Don't you recognize us? Hmm? Oh, oh, yes. I, I guess my mind is wandering a bit. Excuse me, gentlemen. Sit down, won't you? Can I help you? <laughs> no, we... Well, things are kind of slow around the office, and we thought... That yes, we, might uh, we thought you might like some company. Uh, uh, I don't suppose the information matters much, but we just had a traffic report from the Western Division. Uh, yes, as, as a matter of fact, uh, traffic seems to be on the increase again in the West. Huh? On, the, on the increase? Yes. yes, this morning over 20 people made phone calls in California alone. Uh. Twenty phone calls in all of California for the whole morning. Of course they were emergencies, but, but, but well, it, it, it's an increase, J.L. Uh, the one thing I, I didn't think possible, a boycott by the public. A nationwide boycott is... It's incredible. It, it can't last, J.L. They've got to crack sooner or later. They've got to crack do you know we've lost over $20 million in the last 48 hours? $20 million because of that, that, that woman? Well, now, let's face it, J.L., we tried to talk you out of firing her. Uh, that's right. Blame me. It's my fault. I deserve it. J.L., what are we going oh, to do? I've racked my brain. I, I just don't know. We're licked. An aroused public, the one thing that cannot be ignored... J.L., have you considered hiring her back? Considered it? I'd give my life to hire her back. But I can't find her. And no one, no one will cooperate with me. I can't make an outside phone call. Nobody answers. Nobody. Nowhere. They refuse to use the phone. Our own people won't even answer the phone. Well, I tell you, I tell you, this boycott of me is so complete, it's... It's overpowering. I don't see how people are doing it. An aroused public can do anything. But but how do they communicate with one another? They don't communicate, that's all. And they probably found they aren't missing a thing. You've tried to call her, J.L.? I've even been over to her house. Maybe she's moved. I don't know. She's gone somewhere. Uh, what about a detective agency? I've been calling detective agencies all morning. Look. They won't answer. Nobody will answer. I'll bet you that's the only phone in the whole city that's ringing. The only one. And you know why they won't answer? Because they know it's me calling. Me! The only one who will use the phone! I tell you, I tell you, we're licked! How, how long can we hold out? Oh, who knows? Maybe another day or so. Maybe even not that long. Won't the bank give us an extension? They will not. And they sent a vice president over here to tell me that this morning. They sent him, mind you... Wouldn't even use the phone to let me know that. Well, I guess there's nothing we can do but ask the court to appoint a receiver. And there's a... Huh? Well, listen, listen. It's... Am I hearing things? It's the phone, J.L. Uh, y your phone. Right there on the desk. You mean, you mean this one? It's, it's got to be. Yes, it's, it's, it's the only phone in the room. But we're, we're just imagining it, huh? Uh, pick it up and find out. It sounds like a phone. Well, what can you lose? Pick it up. If it's... If it's a wrong number. If it's a wrong number. Go ahead and answer it. Hello? Hello. May I speak to Mr. Cannon, please? Who? Mr. Cannon. Is this the phone company? Yes, yes. I'd like to speak to the president, Mr. Cannon. Well, this... This is Mr. Cannon. Mr. Cannon, is this really you? Yes, who, who, who is calling? This is Mrs. Becker. Mrs. Becker. Mrs. Becker. Mrs. Becker. Mrs. Becker, is it? Becker. You, is it you? Yes, Mr. Cannon. Oh, I'm awfully sorry about all the trouble I've caused the company. The company? Yes. The phone company was very good to me. It's been my home for almost 45 years. Yes. And I hate to see it hurt like yes. this on account of me. Oh, yes. 
It, it wasn't your fault, Mrs. Becker. Oh, I know what the papers are saying about you, Mr. Cannon, but I feel that perhaps it was my fault after all. And now everybody's angry, and all my friends are going to lose their jobs. Is, uh, is that what you're worried about, Mrs. Becker? The other people who are going to lose their jobs? Oh. Well, of course. They love the company just as much as I, and now they'll have to leave. Mrs. Becker. I was wondering, Mr. Cannon, if we might not be able to, uh, well, to sort of pretend that you were hiring me back just for the newspapers, and then, after a few days, I could, I could quietly resign. Uh, re resign? Yes, for the good of the company. Uh, for the good of the company. Are you... Oh. Are you still there, Mr. Cannon? Yes. Yes, I'm still here, Mrs. Becker. And so will you be, Mrs. Becker. As long as you want. You mean I'm, I'm hired again at my old job? Yes, and uh, Mrs. Becker, if uh, anyone else wants to make a toll call from a phone booth and doesn't have the money... Yes? You tell them it's against the rules. Against the rules. Do you hear me, Mrs. Becker? I'll back you up. <laughs> This is Loretta Young again. We all like to feel distinguished, to want to be significant. This wanting to rise above others is a kind of thirst that affects all of us. It's a part of our all too human nature. Could we look around us to catch in one instant the attitude that best distinguishes a man from the animal world around him? It would not be when he is signing a treaty, a contract, or an autograph. It would be when he is kneeling in prayer. For this is the most distinguished act a human being can perform. At prayer, a man, a woman, a child has a party-to-party -party line to the one above all who is the judge of human worth. When praying, he receives the undivided attention of God, to whom every human being is important. Now, what is true of the individual is doubly and triply true of the family. A family on its knees before its loving Heavenly Father touches the heart of its father and brings on itself blessings. Blessings that only family prayer can secure. And not the least of these blessings will be mutual love and peace in the home. For the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed The Man Who Bought the Phone Company, starring Stephen McNally. Loretta Young was your hostess. Others in our cast were Marjorie Bennett, Charlotte Lawrence, Howard Culver, Leo Curley, Pat McGeehan, and Leo Thomas. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present... Barbara Stanwyck and George Nader with Irene Dunn as hostess. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.